Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who is interested is welcome to join. We will go to our first participant, who is Jordan Leach. Hi, Jordan. Good evening, Ajahn. How do you find Bangkok to be? Um, well, it's a little better now. I found an apartment. So mm -hmm. I just moved in a couple of days ago and uh, it feels um, it feels nice to have a quiet place to retreat to. How far is it from your school? Uh, it's um, it's about 40 minutes. Um, 40 minutes. That's quite a way. A bit of a ways, but by what? By by bus or by taxi or um, about fifteen minutes of that is walking, and uh, the rest is on the BTS. I see. It's okay. Near Onnut Station. Onnut. The school is here near Onnut, or, or the apartment near is near Onnut. The apartment is uh, the school is near Nana. Nana. Okay. Once you get to the BTS, then it's just a. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just a few, yeah. few station, and you're there. Yeah, and from from on you have to walk in, into the uh, your apartment. That's right. Yeah, but okay. uh, about ten minutes from there, it's it's a uh, it's a nice neighborhood though. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good exercise too. Huh? Exactly, minutes. that's how I think about it. Yeah, I don't want to get out of shape. So, yeah, good. Um, so do you have uh, anything? Uh, Tanajan, I, I have one question that uh, came to mind. Um, uh, I wrote it down. So um, are there invisible beings who can influence us negatively? Or is it only the kalesas in our own hearts? Um, well, it depends on whether you can connect with them or not in the first place. OK. If you, if you can connect with them, then who knows what they will uh, convince you to do, good or bad, it depends. Like if you could connect with the uh, Arahant, they, they would, they would uh, convince you to do good things. I see. So you have to have this ability to, to be able to connect with, with them, which is Upachara Samadhi. Okay. If you don't have, don't worry about it. And, Usually they cannot come and influence your mind and turn you into a devil or something like that. It's your own defilement that turns yourself into a devil. Okay, so no one to blame. Yeah, no, no one to blame. They can, they might be able to, to talk to you and convince you to do something. So, um, uh, for example, um, Mara is just a, Personification. That's right. Okay. Of your evil thoughts, of your bad thoughts. Okay. Thank you, Tanajan, for clearing that up. Okay. Uh, I don't have any more questions. So. If you have strong mindfulness, then your mind will not be able to, to mislead you to, into thinking about doing bad things. Okay, so we should just uh, just have to um, prioritize yeah. that and uh, yeah, practice mindfulness a lot, yeah. and then your mind will be 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 empty of thoughts. Then then your mind will be calm and peaceful and happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that way that way I won't. Uh, if my mind is free from thoughts, I won't, um, the thoughts won't, I won't be talking myself into doing things that are uh, yes. unskillful, right? That's right. Usually your thoughts are uh, guided by your defilement. Okay. So try to stop as much as possible, especially, 
usually your thought, your sensual desire, we, we usually push you to think in terms of going after sensual pleasures. Mm -hmm. And this is the hindrance to your meditation practice. When you have sensual cravings, then you'll find you might you yourself restless and agitated. But if you have mindfulness, if you recite mantra continuously, then this thought about sensual cravings will not be able to come up. I think, uh, yeah, I think um, using the mantra, um, Bhutto, um, I think that's good for me because uh, I can I can keep repeating it, uh, it you know during various activities and uh, won't, uh, it, for example when I'm trying to just uh, be mindful of the movements of my body I think I'm more likely to get lost in in thought and uh, but if I can use buto then um, that's yeah. more uh, that when it's you a little easier you. for me. When you walk from your apartment or back to your apartment, you can recite Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. Mm. But you also have to look at the at the street that you're walking. <laughs> you have to I be, you know, be aware of what's going on around you too, but not be distracted by them, that's all. Dima, <clears throat> Dima. <laughs> Okay. Kun mak mak ka tanajan. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, go to New Delhi. Rajat. Good evening, Tanajan. How's life treating you? Okay. Very well. I'm. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Peaceful. Any question tonight? Right now, I don't have a question, Ajahn. I'm listening. Okay. I'll go to Penang. Okay, Yen So. Hello. Tanajan, good evening. Uh, happy to meet Tanajan and all the team members. And uh, no question, Tanajan. Okay. Go to Kuala Lumpur then, Alvin. Namaskar, Tanajan. Uh, I've got no question as well. Just come in and listen and greeting okay. to Tanajan. Thanks. What about Titima in Bangkok? Namaskar, Tanajan. Don't have any question. In Bangkok, same from Singapore. Yeah, greeting, Prajan. Uh, no questions at the moment. Thank you, Prajan. Okay, what about uh, Switzerland with? Professor Ken. Hi, Professor. How's it going, Prajan? Hello. Uh, I also comment? have no, no questions no question. at the moment, Prajan. Okay. We'll go to Kwan Liman back in Malaysia. Hello, John. Uh, yes, I have something to ask, Sajan. Sajan, I feel the difference when I uh, talk less and think don't I mean think less and it automatically will the the thoughts reduce and I don't have much thoughts uh, even throughout the day unless I want to think so it it becomes a uh, relatively empty and quiet and uh, I feel my attention is uh, more inwards uh, than outwards so. Mm -hmm. Tajan, uh, um, even when I'm doing uh, work throughout the day, I feel empty and not much thoughts. And uh, because of this, uh, the mind is like not thinking and not reflecting on the four elements or death or anything. It just want to be quiet and empty. So what should I do? When you, should, you should meditate, you should sit down and get it in the mind to become still. But your mind is not yet still, you still have some thoughts going on, but not as, as, it, as it used to be. So you want to stop it completely by sitting and meditate. 
as much as possible. Okay. Don't worry about the vipassana, the wisdom part yet. Try to get the mind to into jhana <clears throat> and get ubeka equanimity first. Once you have strong equanimity, then you can then start thinking about vipassana, wisdom, the four elements, the anatta, the anicca of the body, nature of the body, so that you can be able to give it up, let it go, give it back to nature. It doesn't belong to you, your body. It's the delusion that claims the body to be you and you cling on to it so tight. The only way to be able to let go of this attachment is to have ubeka, have equanimity from your, from your meditation. You know it's not you, but right now you cannot let go of it. You're like a Siamese twin. You, your mind and your body are connected so tight. The only way to get rid of it is to get ubeka, Get equanimity. So you have to practice a lot of meditation to get into equanimity. When you're in equanimity, when you're in jhana, you're temporarily separated from the body. <clears throat> and after you come out of meditation, the mind and the body will reconnect. And you have, then you start teach the mind to let go of the body. To teach the mind anicca, dukkha, anatta, nature of the body, all the time when you're not meditating. So then whatever happens to your body, you will not be affected. You will not get any dukkha. Because you know that it doesn't belong to you. That it, it's going to have to be separated from you one day. It's going to have to die. So if you willingly let it die, then you will have no dukkha, no suffering. Okay. You have strong enough ability to let go of your attachment yet? Not strong. Are you mean the body? Yeah, when you let go of your body, not be afraid of it, whatever happens to it. Uh, conventionally, yes, but when it comes to the real situation, I'm not sure if I can let go. Well, you have to find out. <laughs> go, go to the cemetery and spend the night there alone in the cemetery. Cemetery? Or in the forest somewhere. I'm going to the forest uh, end of March for one week, but uh, together with a group of, it's, the, it's a retreat, so it's not alone. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to take the test alone <laughs> because you cannot rely on anybody to protect you. Yes. Yes. They give um, you a false yeah, sense of security. Down. Yeah. When you're around people, it gives you a false sense of security. But when you're alone, you feel really scared, you feel really exposed. <clears throat> then you can you can test your your attachment, whether you can let go of your attachment or not. Yeah. So I have to go to Kauchi on again. Well, wherever, let's ask a matter which particular place, place that you feel threatened. You feel that your life might be, uh, be you know, be harmed. <clears throat> and see if you're not afraid or not. Okay. Okay, Ajahn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, Claudia, also from Switzerland. Hi, Claudia. How do you find your new life in Switzerland like? Good? Good afternoon from Switzerland. Yes, um, life is good at Switzerland. I enjoy my little job at the Red Cross. And 
now I try to overcome my biggest attachment. I was talking with Kenneth some weeks ago when we met each other at the monastery in Dhammapala. I try to get rid of my attachment to follow political issues. <laughs> And this is really very hard. So I try to replace at least one day a week, Tuesday. Um, I try to replace watching the news by listening to Dhamma talks um, or maybe more meditation. And I try to expand it um, to two days a week, not to watch the news. And I realize it's, it's really, it's very, very difficult to me, um, but I try. Yes, if you try, you'll find a difference between watching the news and not watching the news. And your mind is much better off when you're not watching the news. Yeah. yeah. I try to be very mindful um, when my mind tells me, oh, you have to watch the news or to have, you have to see what's going on in Germany. Um, I try to convince my mind not to watch the news, but to look on YouTube, maybe to listen to a Dhamma talk about or of Achan Mahaboa or Achan Cha. So yeah, I try to do that instead of. Yes, if you want to follow the news of the world, you just look that everybody's going to get old, get sick and die. That's all you need to know, really. Yeah. That's the real news. The, yes. news, the news that people don't want to live, to to follow. Yeah. And it's it's so interesting to realize how much the imagination of a self is connected to my interest in politics. Because when I use the word myself, it's like like the fear to lose myself if I don't if I'm not involved in political issues. Mm -hmm. So when I stop to get involved in political issues, I may maybe or hopefully lose myself. So this is something I always repeat in my mind. It's, it's liberation. That's, that's what you want to, to do, to lose yourself. Because yourself yeah. is just a delusion. And yes. There's no self. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope that I will lose myself by not identifying myself with political issues because I, I really need to lose this attachment. Otherwise, I will not yes. do any progress. Anytime you want to follow the news, just tell them it's all the old, old story. Everybody getting old, getting sick, and die. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the real truth, you know, that we don't want yeah. to think about. Yeah. We just want so to. So I, I hope that I will keep this keeps the strength and gets stronger and stronger because my mind feels much better when I don't watch the news. <laughs> That's right. No yeah. disturbance, no agitation. Yeah. Good. Try to try to stick to the the regimen, the the discipline. Yeah. I will try. Okay, good. Anything else? No, not at the moment. Thank you very much. Okay. I'll go to An Anura in New Zealand. Why early in the morning for you now? Hi, Namaskar. Yeah, yes, uh, just past two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I'm, I have no question, Tangadan, so I'm happy to listen to Dhamma. So, yes. so what you do after this? You go back to sleep? Yeah, maybe I had about three hours sleep, so I'll get another two hours sleep before I go back to work I after this. So we're still recovering from our trip. Ramay won't be joining. She's still jet lagged. Yeah. We just got back. Yeah. We we back uh, Sunday lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Then I started working on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And um, we had very good uh, last few days. Well, it's very good. So uh, we went to Chindao Cave. So we managed, so we had some meditation session inside Ajaman's cave. That was one of the highlights. So, and also we went up to Luang Po Sim's cave. Yes, where he, Tampa his Plong. cave. Mm, Tampa yeah, Plong. What, what Tampa Plong, yeah. Mm. So those two are the highlights. So it's, 
inside Ajahn Man's cave is amazing. There's so once we sat down, it's no no thoughts came in. It's it's uh, it's an amazing place. So it's a good place to be alone to, to manage. Yeah, so it. much yeah, so much energy in there. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, another highlight of Tangaja is uh, so we in what uh, the Mapala Ajahn Noom's monastery we saw um relics from some of the lay people in the village so so who have purified their mind so that was so convincing and uh, that uh, our path is right so we can achieve we can attain we can we can cross the stream so that's a confidence that we got yeah, yeah it's good to make a pilgrim yes so, yes so yeah, I want to do it again I mean, maybe next time if I, that would come up. <laughs> anyway, I need to practice. So if practice is good. So after the pilgrimage, I am um, using Buddha a lot. Yeah. The purpose yeah. of the, the, the trip is to inspire your practice, not to yes. become more more attached to your, your pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah, true. So, so yeah. true. I mean, I inspire the teachers like you and so we, the la, one of the, the last, we went to Watpa, uh, Arana Vivek, you know, Luampo. Luampo Plain, I think. Uh, Luampo Plain Monastery, so yeah. the Luampo Lamai, so gave us a good Dhamma talk for uh, about more than an hour, Q&A. And we said that we visited the uh, Pay respect to you and uh, listen to your Dhamma. He said, you're so lucky to have a first class meditation teacher like you. So, so he, can, he said, uh, you, are, you are highly regarded in Thailand and thank you. So we are so fortunate to listen to them from you, Tangajan. Okay. Keep up your practice, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What a Kyrian dog. Long you, time yeah. to see. Why are you now in London or in, back in Thailand? Um, hello, Tanachan. Um, I'm in Hanoi right now. Oh, um, Hanoi. Yes. Um, I'm sorry I cannot pay respect to you properly because okay. I've been having, I've been having um, a burn in my leg. Mm -hmm. It's been a month now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I haven't used this opportunity um, a lot because it's so painful and I couldn't uh, get much out of it. Um, now it's on the mend. Uh, I have to pick, <laughs> I have to pick uh, the skin and so on every day. <laughs> and uh, I don't feel much of a super. <laughs> it's not, so not a super sure. that you have to. It's not super that you should worry about. It is your your painful feeling that you want to to deal with. Yeah, I could like uh, at first I have to use all of my strengths to in deal with the pain because it's not normal, no, not not normal um, water bo uh, boiling water burn. Uh, but um, but that is like nearly most of what I could do. Not not much in terms of. Uh, other benefit you want to use this as a, a test to to teach yourself to let go of the the vetana or the feeling such as this painful feeling treat it as an itcha dukkangonatta i saw so... If you could not yet let, treat, let go of it, then you should use mindfulness to separate your your mind from the painful feeling, to leave the painful feeling alone by reciting mantra or keep watching your breathing, your breath, meditate. I had to use the butto a lot <laughs> to go through it. Um, but uh, it's also um, I had to sleep more <laughs> to forget about it. 
Yeah, you try to do as much as you can. You know? Yeah. When you're awake, when you you might start to feel agitated or painful, then you should teach your mind that it's the body that is painful in pain, not not the mind. The mind just merely knowing the pain. So don't create any cravings for the pain to yeah. disappear. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. Try to separate the mind from the, the pain from the body. <clears throat> yeah, but I don't feel I benefit a lot from it. I just like try to teach myself. It's 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 the body which is painful. That it's not the mind which is painful. But that's all that uh, all I, I could do. I don't think it went in a lot. <laughs> yeah, you just have to the tissue yourself to look at the painful feeling like you like the weather yeah. you cannot control the weather so you cannot control the pain so you just have to leave the pain alone if it, if it, if it comes if it wants to stay let it stay don't have any wish for it to go away to disappear sure just try to learn to live with the pain Accept accepting the pain. That this is part of your your destiny. <clears throat> I didn't make the mind not being disturbed or, uh, disturbed by the pain. Keep the mind calm and peaceful. Thank you, Tanacha. How long you plan to stay in Hanoi? <clears throat> um, I'm flying back to London this weekend. Mm. Have you heard of your Ajahn, uh, what's his name? Who you Ajahn used Nippon? To yes. Yeah, yeah I, I was there when it happened. Oh, really? I see. I guess it's unfortunate things can happen to anybody. Yes. But he, he's getting better. Yes, that's what I heard is steadily de recovering. Yeah. Hope he can return back to normal eventually. <clears throat> it will never be normal. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it, it will leave a lot of um, impact. Mm -hmm. It's it it cannot ne never be normal. It's it cannot be back to 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 before again for sure. Yeah. Well, it depends on how your mind react to it. Also, maybe your mind can be better off from it, from from the experience, or worse. It depends on whether you know how to teach the mind the right way or not. The right way is to see the pain as anijam dukkha manata. <clears throat> so you, have you been practicing when you were here with Ajahnan Nippon? Were you with him at his monastery when you, when you said um, you were here? My, my burn happened just the day after I came. So that was a big, big... Um, practice for me <laughs> so you couldn't stay in the monastery then i did i stayed for uh, nearly three weeks three weeks with back the, and forth to the... hospital every day and uh, mm -hmm. and um and i have to be back to hanoi to get uh, to seek uh, like a herbal treatment because it's mm -hmm. it's it's not not improve. Mm -hmm. It's getting better now with the herbal treatment. Yeah, it's much much better now. Yes, I see. I see the mend already. Um, the dead skin is nearly off. Like I have to cut it every day, but uh, it's but it will take a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope you have full recovery. Thank you very much.
All right. You have any question? Uh, th that's all that I uh, wanted to ask. What to what to do to make it more beneficial for me? Just 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 accept the the truth that this is part of the of the nature of the body. It is subjected to, to aging, sickness, and and death. And the mind just have to learn to accept it when these things happen. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Go to Sao Paulo with Alfredo. <clears throat> Hi, Bante. Hello, how are you? <clears throat> okay. Happy? Practicing. Happy? Yes. Yes. Normal. Normal, okay. Anata, Bante, Anata. <laughs> no dukkha. No dukkha. No, no, ah, dukkha, yes, né? Dukkha, dukkha is, is thinking, né? But the thinking is dukkha, né? Yeah, thinking about defilement. Thinking yes, about defilement yes, is yes. dukkha. Yes. Thinking yes. with craving. Yes. But why, why Buddha say, I am Buddha? Buddha is, have a nata, né, Bante? Well, the word Buddha is it means the one who knows, the knower. Uh, he knows yes. the truth. He knows the four noble truths. So he be, the, no, the knower, the knower, the knower is for Buddha sure is an, enlightened. Enlightened. Buddha means enlightened. I am enlightened. I'm Buddha. Yes, yes. Not not a not a personal not a personal phrase, ne, but. Well, we live in two worlds, a conventional world and absolute absolute world. Yes. So when we talk, yes. we have to use conventional language. Yes. Yes. So, you know, this, so like you and me, we, we use conventional, but in fact, we there's no you or me, right? There's just two or five khandas communicating right now. Yes. Vedana Sanya Rupa Vedana Sanya Sankara Vinyana. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and the the access to, to nowhere is good to Nebante. Uh, 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 Buddha has the, the ca ca capacity yes. to, to 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 be able reach, to, see. to reach the nowhere to Reach the perfect knower, Nepal. Yeah, to know that everything are just uh, natural phenomena. No people, yes. no animal, no nothing. We just yes. make up this concept. Yes, no it's, Alfredo. A mm. it's all five khandas. Yes, a perfect mind. Yes. It's possible a perfect mind, never. It is possible. It's Nibbana. <laughs> Yes, nibbana is, is is when you finally have 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 got rid of all your delusion, yes. got rid of all your cravings. Moha doza eloba. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Have you got, have you got there yet? Oh, oh, I I try, but I try, but I okay. practice. Keep it up, okay. Let me know when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Go to Anne, Anne Kachinda, if I pronounce your name correctly. Where are you from? Kyochinda. I'm, I'm right close by Washington, D.C., United States. Um, I actually Thai, but I want to eavesdrop and learn English when you talk the Dhamma talk, so I can learn more uh, the English words that have used. Uh, you find it useful? Yes. Uh, Sometimes I have to translate Dhamma uh, at the Wat Thai Washington, D.C. I see. So <laughs> I need to learn more from you. Good. Good. You have any question you'd like to ask tonight? Yes, please. Um, if I may. Uh, I would like to know, uh, I understand that 
uh, mind and body is separated. And I know that it's my natural condition, but sometimes when I um, have to do something that I have to focus or concentrate, uh, it started to tense up inside the body. Um, I feel like the core of the body is tense up while the mind is calm. So uh, the tense up can, you know, the, the tension can last for hours after uh, meditation or even though I don't meditate, but I start to focus, concentrate on doing something. So I know it's a natural condition, but it's still ongoing. If you may um, give me some suggestion. And Maybe it's, it's your defilement re reaction to being under control. The mind, mm -hmm. the defilement doesn't like to be control. It wants to be free. It wants to be able to think, to, to do whatever it wants to do. So when you start to control it with mindfulness, it can react and force the body to have some, some, uh, you know, something. Um, so just just ignore it. Just say, as, if you if you don't think it's a physical condition, then just. Maybe just mental reaction to the, the the practice, and just just ignore it. Don't worry about it. But if if it persists all the time, then you might have to go see a doctor. But I think this is more psycho psychosomatic. This is based on your your mind, induced by your mind. When I first started. Uh, medit uh, practice meditation, I noticed it's more, and I went through uh, uh, the doctor and have a checkup, MRI, brain scan, nothing going on. <laughs> Everything is healthy and strong. Um, so like you said, it could be the mind. That's right. So I'm, um, I'm just let it be. Yeah, just try to use more mindfulness if you can. Keep reciting Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. And when the mind eventually becomes calm, then I think all this this condition will disappear. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, but if you find it too stressful to do it, then you have to to reduce your practice, maybe because maybe it's more than you can handle, more than you can chew right now. Sometimes I cannot. Uh say butto butto um, because it's make me more even more tense stuff uh, mm -hmm. i only kind of know when thoughts arise thought sees uh when i started to um uh, you know uh, thinking or imagining about things i know when it's happened and and sometimes i don't and uh, it just stop uh, when i uh, acknowledge thinking Mm -hmm. And the I mind, just the, noticed sensories. The mind used to be free and it doesn't like <laughs> to be controlled. See? When you try to control it, then you start to react. <clears throat> so just have just just try to get a, a balance, not too much, not not too little, somewhere in the middle, middle way. Right. I try to um, be in, uh, to be equanimous. How do you say that? Ubeka. Yeah, equanimity, equanimous, equanimous. Yeah, I, I try to do that, but um, try to do it naturally as well, not to try too hard. Yes. Okay, just, just keep up. Do as much as you can, <laughs> okay. I'll go to Malaysia with Philip. Hi, Philip. Hi, good evening, Panajan. Uh, I wishing you well and wishing everybody well. I don't have any questions. I'm glad to be listening in tonight. Okay, thank you. For the full moon, full moon. I forgot where you're from, Indonesia. I'm from China. Hello. China. Okay, China. Good evening, Adyang. I'm from yes. China. 
What can uh, I do for you? And now I'm fighting. I'm finding a draw. It's hard to get a draw in China at my age. Uh, I feel a little sad. Getting a what? A draw? Yes. What 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 is it? What is it? I, I don't I don't understand the word. Oh, I need to get a draw to earn money and then I can and I uh, I don't have a draw now, so I'm uh, so uh, it's a little high, so I feel sad. You mean not being able to make money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't try to use less money. See? Don't 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 spend much money. Then you don't have to have much money. Yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. Only spend on the essential, the non-essential. Then don't 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 spend on your money on them. Just spend on food, clothing, uh, housing, and medicine. That's all you should should okay. should spend your money on. Other thing I consider luxury. If, if okay. you only spend on the essential, then you don't have to have much money. Yes, I trade my um, uh, trades, uh, trade my behavior. Okay, um, I have an a question is that um, how can we know a liar person whether he is a sotapanna? Well, you have to be a sotapanna yourself first. <laughs> to be able to judge whether another person is a sotapanna or not. And you just have, you have to talk and, and ask questions to find out whether that person really knows what you know or not. See? So if you are sotapanna, you will know what question to ask another person. If you, oh, but if you, if you're not, then you don't, you don't know the question to ask. So don't worry about it if you if you cannot find out whether that person is a sotapanna or not. Just if doesn't doesn't matter. Okay. But you I'll don't have to, you don't have to believe that person if if he or she said said that he or she he or she is a sotapanna. If if you cannot prove it, the Buddha said just just don't. Don't believe or don't disbelieve. Just just leave it alone until you can prove it for yourself. Okay, that's a good. Oh, that's very good. Okay. Yeah. So Tabana, uh, if someone is a so Tabana, uh, do he uh, he both to get married and have a kid? Yes, yeah, Sotapanna still have sexual desire. Oh. A Sotapanna okay. uh, can let go of his attachment to his body, not afraid that the body will get sick, get old, or die. But he still have sexual desire for other people's body. She wants to get married. She wants to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Okay, yeah. I understand. It's very hard. <laughs> well, if we see, see, then we all be, be enlightened by now. We all be sotapanna by now. <laughs> but it's not impossible if you. Yeah, if you practice, you have to practice um, sila, keep the precepts, especially the eight precepts, and practice mindfulness and meditation. Then study the nature of the body to see that the body is not you, you are not the body. Then you can become a sotapanna. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
the air. Thank you. Where, Thank which you. part of China are you in? Oh, um, on the south of the China. It's... South of China, Kunming. No, no, it's it's the Guangdong province. Guangdong near Hong Kong, near Hong Kong, close to uh, Hong Kong. I'm not no. Guangdong. I'm not from Guangdong. I'm not from the Guangxi province. It's it's at, at the at the right of the Guangdong province, and Guangdong province is near the Hong Kong. I see. Also okay. near the Thailand. <laughs> yeah, Thailand. Okay. Yes. I've been to Thailand for two months, and then I go back to China because I I need to buy a drug to earn money to um, from myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now you're making money, working to yeah. make more money, so you can spend yeah. more money when you have money to to spend. Uh, I don't need to. A, a lot of money. I I know. I just excess, though. You know. Yeah. You told me. Okay. Yeah. Just try to spend on only on the essential. Don't spend on the luxury. Yes. Then you don't have to work so hard to make so much money. Then you will have time to practice dhamma. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Adyang, for encourage me. Encourage me for, for thank for thank you for encouraging me. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I'll go to Bangkok now to be Ravin. Hi, good evening, Pajan. Hi, how are you? I am good, thank you. I'm back back to work. So Prashant, oh, last week I was in Pattaya. I was also working, but I wanted to change of atmosphere. So I, I spent four or five days there and it you was can, good to see you. You could work at home. Yes, uh, my company gives the flexibility to, to work hybrid. You can choose mm. if you want to work at home or at the office. But mm -hmm. if there's important meetings, then I need to go into the office. Mm -hmm. But it's a flexible option, so it works well for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were saying? Oh, I was just saying I have uh, one question, Prajan. Since we are talking on the topic of uh, letting go of attachment to the body, so is my understanding correct that there are three things to let go of? The fear of aging? the fear of sickness and the fear of death. Is that correct? Yes. Sickness is the fear of painful feeling, pain. So this is the five khandas. The body is the rupa khanda and the feeling on the nama khanda. So they, they, make up, they, they become the five khanda. If you can let go of this, then you can let go of the five khanda. Letting go means leaving them alone. Don't try to control or manage them in the way that you want, which is not possible. You want to control, make your body not get not getting old, not getting sick, and not get not dying. It's something that you cannot do, and it will cost you a lot of suffering, a lot of mental suffering. If you don't want to have any mental suffering, then you just have to leave the body alone. When it gets old, let it get old. When it gets sick, let it get sick. It doesn't mean that you cannot treat your body. You can treat your body, but your mind should not be worried about the sickness, whether you will get well or not, or whether you're going to die. You must be ready to accept this, this happening. If you accept, then there will be no stress, no, no fear no suffering. If you, cannot, if you cannot accept, you still want to live, you want to get well, then they will become stressful to you. 
so treatment of the body is treat according to the condition but don't have any expectation of getting better just treat it as as it is by the condition so uh, uh, just like are uh, you feeding a dog yeah you, know, you you look after the dog you give it food and whatever and give it food and then give it the essential things to, to exist but you, in the back of your mind, you have to know that eventually it's going to get old, get sick, and die. If you can look at your body as your pet instead of yourself, then maybe there won't, there won't be so much stress. There. The problem is look at the we're looking at the pet as being ourselves, looking at the dog as being ourselves. The body is just like a dog that we feed, we look after. But our delusion um, make us think that we are the body. Yes. So treat the body as our pet. So we yeah. will know that it's temporarily. That's right. And it's not you. The body is not you. The body is your pet like a dog that you, that you feed, that you look after. If you can treat your body like a pet, then you won't feel so much suffering, right? So much anxiety or worry. When you're treating your, your, your pet as being yourself, so that's where the problem is. And the mental suffering is just as bad as the physical suffering, if not worse, more. Worse, worse than the physical. The physical suffering is only 10%, while the mental suffering is 90%. Wow. So it's much, much more yes. painful. Like the, the Buddha and the noble disciple, they can get rid of the 90% of the pain. So the ten percent remaining to pain doesn't doesn't bother them. See. The Buddha still feel the pain of the body, but he has he has no pain of the mind. There's no pain of the mind. Ninety of the percent, ninety percent of the pain is is being cured by the practice of meditation and wisdom. So you need both, you need to meditate also, and then you need to develop wisdom to, to see the body as being a pet, not being yourself. So meditation makes the mind calm and wisdom will, will, will try to destroy the defilements in our mind. Right, and by, by trying to destroy the, the craving, the desire to to, to to go against the, the truth of the body, which is the desire not to get old, not to get sick, and not to die. This is the cause of the mental suffering, the mental pain. Ninety percent of it is caused by our desire not to get old, get sick, or die. <clears throat> but we studied then. But if we study the nature, we know we cannot stop the mind, the body from getting old, getting sick, or dying. So all we need to do is to accept it. That's all. The mind can accept it if the if the mind has equanimity. But if, it, if the mind doesn't have equanimity, it cannot resist the desire or the, 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 to not get old, get sick, or die. So our mind is kind of playing a trick on us, trying to let us uh, not accept the true nature of existence. Because we know yeah. the moment we are born that this nature will have to take its course, but our mind won't accept it. Well, we don't want it to. Right? The mind doesn't want it to. Even if it was the truth, and it tried to forget this truth. See? Nobody wants to think about getting old, getting sick, or dying. Right? Everybody always think about it. Living, living longer, staying stronger, more healthy, 
Every time you wish people, you wish them good health and longevity. You never wish, you never wish them sickness or death, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but which no. is true, though? Which is true? It's the latter. It's right. inevitable. Yeah, you don't wish them the truth. They, you wish them falsehood. Yeah. <laughs> You're lying to them. You're cheating. <laughs> Like when I say good health, long life, you know, when you live a long life, I'm, I'm just, I'm just lying to you, really. How can you live long life? How can you not die? But you just don't want to accept the truth, so I cannot say the truth to you. You'll get mad at me and you never talk to me anymore. <laughs> I wish you die well. I wish you have a good sickness. <laughs> <laughs> That that's that's the truth, though. <laughs> that's right. But in in conventionality, I don't think many people would take that well. <laughs> because everybody is delusional. Everybody thinks they they should last forever. They should live forever. And then that's the problem. Yeah. Even we all know we are gonna get old, get sick, and die. We still cannot stop this desire to go against this truth. So you need to constantly think about it. The Buddha said you should constantly think about having been born, I'm such a, I'm subjected to aging, sickness, and death. Keep reminding yourself this truth. So don't not so as not to forget. And then in order for the mind to be able to accept this truth. You have to meditate to get it to equanimity. So you need both. You need a reminder of the truth, which we call wisdom, constantly reflecting on anicca, dukkha, anatta. And then also you have to practice meditation to stop the mind from reacting to this truth. Yes, Prajan. So, so that's why the Buddha said that Asotapanna has very, very little suffering left because he's let go of all his attachment to the body. Yes. But so he, that's still what, have, he still has some other, other mental suffering that he still hasn't yet got rid of. The suffering from having a sexual desire. And uh, the, the suffering from still being attached to the self-concept in the mind. The mind still think that it, it is self. It, it, has, it has let go of the attachment to the body, but it still think that it, it, it's still a, a, an I, it's a me in the mind, which can cause suffering when things happen to... <clears throat> To hurt the mind. So the mind can still be hurt despite being free from the body? Yes, it's still being being hurt by the defilement, the remaining defilement that hasn't yet been. So so Prajan, um the body is more of a coarser form of, of defilement. And the mind is more of a finer form of defilement. Is that correct? Yeah, you, yeah, you can say that. You can say that. So the first step is to get rid of the attachment to the body, and then yeah. worry and about then, the rest afterwards. <laughs> then afterwards, you have to detach. You have to de detach the mind from your, from from the self. There's no self in the mind. When the mind still think I am, I think I am, therefore I am. So you have to tell you where, where were you, where where are you when you when your mind stop thinking? When you stop thinking, the I disappear, right? So the the I can only come about from your thinking. So it's not real. 
which is a form of, it's a concept. A fiction produced by the mind. Um, the mind is like a, a, a story writer creating stories by thinking about this and that and say, this is me, this is I. But when you meditate and when you still the mind and this thinking stops and then this I, this concept disappear. So you have to remind you, yourself when you come out of meditation that there's no you. What is thinking, there's, there is thinking, there's knowing, but this thinking is, is knowing is not you thinking or you knowing. It's just natural phenomena. But that's just too far. Now just try to get rid of your attachment to your body first. Yes, Prajan, I think that's... Uh, that's uh, uh, or, sim or more simple, try to get rid of your attachment of the external thing first. Like your possessions, your, your physical comfort, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, Prajan, I will try and think more about that yeah, when I meditate. To... Try to make, try to keep the air present. This is a test of whether you can get rid of your your physical comfort, your sensual pleasure. Yes, I think last time I, I I reflected that the seventh is is probably the most challenging for me. <laughs> <laughs> the entertainment part of life. I think food is not too mm. bad. I I I often skip. What about, what, what about drinking? No, no problem there. I I drink to a minimum now. I've stopped buying drinks <laughs> in my house. I only drink sparingly. <laughs> so I'm 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 almost there, Prajan. It's just yeah, okay. no drugs also. No, 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 never, never. never. Okay. I drink sparingly. <laughs> good, good. Maybe you should try to stop it once. Someday you should not, you should abstain from it entirely. It's one of my midterm goals. I hope to one day stop drinking completely because there really is no benefit to drinking except mm. for saying we want to fit into society. <laughs> mm. But even that is an excuse in itself. That's something that I've learned because I know people who don't drink and can still can you know be in society mm. and fit in so it's more of an excuse to drink i mean it's like uh when you drink you it numbs your mind and makes you forget about all your problems temporarily <laughs> <laughs> okay anything else not for now prachan thank you so much for your insight mm. and your advice okay Okay, Ryan. Hi, Ryan from Singapore. Ryan, can you can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, Tajan, good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. And you? Yes, I'm doing good. Uh, just yesterday we uh, or over the weekend we had Longpu in Tawai. Yes. Yes, he was here in Singapore. Oh, really? Yes. So I heard it's very hard to invite him. He's normally very, very busy because he's a uh, like very famous Kuba Ajahn in Thailand. So he, he did say himself that uh, all his disciples were very surprised when uh, he told them that he accepted an invitation to Singapore. Mm -hmm. How long he staying there? Oh, he was just here over Friday to Monday. So just four days. For the weekend. Yes, just the weekend and give some teachings at uh, Palilai Temple. Mm -hmm. Ajahn King is there? Ajahn King, he, he came to Singapore as well yesterday. So he's here for a short while, I think. Mm -hmm. so, did you understand what he said? Or you have to use a translator. 
I my my Thai is not great, so we had a translator, um, who, who felt a bit awkward, unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately because uh, he is Taiwanese, so he was more comfortable translating to Chinese than English, but uh, he was still a good translator nonetheless. So we managed to still understand the Dharma from Longpu over the weekend. Okay, that's good for Singaporean. To be able to, to listen to his Dhamma talk directly. Yes. Do you have any question tonight? <clears throat> yes, uh, uh Jan. So um I, I'm just curious actually, this might not be such a like a very important question in general, but more just curious because you've uh, met so many monks in your life, you're 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 teaching monks yourself, so I just wonder, um, from your from from where you are, you know, having met so many monks after so many years of practice, uh, very often, a lot of monks, um, at, from what I see, it may not be the ideal situation, right? Not not every monk ends up as a great kuba ajahn. Not every monk reaches the goal of, you know, attaining the the fruits so so i just wonder in in your opinion um let's say there's monks who like maybe they ordain and then within a few months or a few years they they had like a very sudden unfortunate passing like they they died maybe they fell and they hit their head and they died which i which happened before i i did come across a few who died young or maybe there's other monks who you know uh, they could have lived as a monk for many years, 20, 30, 40 years, but then they may not have achieved the fruit or may not even have achieved deep samadhi even sometimes. Then they might feel very um, disappointed in their own practice. So, so that there's a lot of cases of monks who may not have like, you know, reached their goals. So I just wonder, uh, Tanajan, what was your opinion? Do you feel like their ordination was worth it? It's not whether worth it or not. It's just this is the way how karma works for everyone. We all we all have our own karma, so our the consequence of our karma are different because we did different type of karma. So this is how I look at at at, at things that happen to people. They happen to them because of their own karma. I see. So because karma is so so wide ranging, so it's even for for monks who seem to have the ideal situation of practice, but still sometimes it might be very hard for them to achieve the goal. Yeah, there are many other factors besides the karma. The ability to to develop the Dhamma is also can be a factor. Some have a lot of strong ability, some have weak ability. So this can also determine their, you know, their, their status, how they become, whether they're successful or not. We call the 10 perfection barami. You know. We are we all have more or less uh, developed this ten perfection in our past life. And with this ten perfection is the one we will determine our our path in the in the in the Buddha's you know way of of, of life. If we have a lot of perfection, then the likelihood that we can become attained more easily than if someone who has less perfection, has developed less perfection. The ten perfection are dana, dana barami, sila barami, nekama barami, ubeka barami, vanya barami, atitana barami, satya barami, um, what else? 
วิริยะบารมีอันทันติบารมีอิสระ mental qualities that we had developed in the past varyingly from individual to individual some have developed a lot so their likelihood for them to be cut to achieve enlightenment is more than those who have developed less okay so so in a way t a n j a n d i a you can kind of say that it's still worth it because Uh, even though they may not attain, but as living as monks, they are developing their parami. That's why right. you're developing dana parami, charity, precept, sila parami, and then kama abstention from sexual cravings. So these things are good, good, beneficial. It's just that maybe they don't have developed it high enough. Deep enough to be able to become enlightened. Thank you, Tan and Jan. Uh, this is a side, uh, this is a side observation. I, I was scrolling through p a l e l a i s pictures, and I I managed to see that uh, Tan and Jan, you you actually gave talks over Zoom that were aired live at p a l e l a i Uh, like 2015, nine years ago. Yes, I think I gave one. One, it was Skype. Then there was no Zoom. Oh yes. But, uh, <clears throat> but it was very difficult to. I think the sound system was not so clear. I see. Yes. So, so that that was the origin of this Zoom session, was it, Tanja? Well, not really. The the Zoom session started because of the COVID. See, when there was COVID, there's no way that I could communicate with the the students because nobody could not, could not come into the monastery to listen to Dharma talks like before. So then we there are this 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 different types of uh, you know. Programs, every application that you can use for communicating online. So, uh, so I tried Zoom and tried some other method also. But eventually, Zoom seemed to be more lasting than the other method. I, I used to do live Q and A alone by myself on Sunday, reading people's questions, sending into the comment. But I find it very exhausting and very. So I eventually stopped. <clears throat> Didn't have time for rest. <clears throat> and I tried some Facebook Live. Uh, Facebook also have this kind of a program like Zoom, but you know it just didn't work out. Um, maybe I just didn't have the put in enough effort, effort or something. Eventually, it turned into. Into Zoom seems to be more, more convenient for everybody to join. Yes, uh, th thank you very much, t a n a j a n for offering these sessions. They are they are all very helpful. So I really, yeah. I cannot do this alone. I have a few assistants helping with this. Yes, thank you for all your assistance and admin. Yeah. Okay, bye. Right. Good luck to you. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to Ninning. Ninning, where are you from? Indonesia. Now you have to unmute your microphone. You see the the. App. Somehow there's no. You cannot find the 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 icon that asks you to unmute. It's usually down by the bottom left of your screen. Boy, what's happening? Yeah. Um. Okay. 
Did you ask her to unmute? Yeah, I, she has it already, but uh, it's still it's still not not on. It's still mute. She used a cell phone. Uh, let me check. I'm sorry, we cannot communicate yet. Try, try to find the new button. If you can find it, click on it. In the meantime, I'll go on to the next participant, okay? All right, go to Dubai with Aparachita. <clears throat> how are you? I'm fine, how are you, Rajan? Same, good, okay, happy? Yes, happy and uh, uh, grateful for your wisdom because uh, we have uh, Ramadan now. So in Dubai, I think the traffic has gone absolutely crazy. So it's like you just have to patiently wait for almost two hours for a journey which takes 20 minutes. And uh, Because of Ramadan? So Ramadan is um, the Muslim uh, ear, ear, fasting, ear, fasting, fasting, exactly, yeah. fasting. But what, so then, what, what that has to do with the traffic? Yes, because uh, all the uh, offices get over early. So wow. then at two o'clock or three o'clock, everybody is going all together back home. And uh, so it's like really... Uh, everywhere and since people fast obviously lots of people are quite irritable and getting into accidents so it's quite interesting phenomenon you, you cannot eat after before sunset right you have to wait for yes. after sunset and they don't drink water too so oh, oh that's very hard that's very hard yes. to water. exactly um mm. yes so but uh yeah does, i was does everybody be, is required to to observe if you're Muslim? Uh, no, not everybody. No. It's yeah. just uh, people who want to observe, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I tried to use a little bit of that coming back to the mind and um, coming into acceptance and like I can't do anything because, and it is helpful. Like I could have been irritated or I could choose not to be. So that was good. So you use mindfulness too? Yes, I actually also just chanted Bhutto or tried to just uh, let go, become, let go, let go. Let go. Yes, and mm. uh, it actually felt okay. Mm. Mm. Like, uh, yeah. so yeah. Or you can use Anatta, Anatta, you cannot control this situation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I'm stuck. So, like, I could yeah. be stuck like that in so many parts of my life. I can do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just have to accept it. Yeah. Once you accept, your mind becomes calm and peaceful. Yeah. Good. Do you have any questions tonight? Uh, no, no questions. Just happy to attend. Thank you. Right. Okay. I'll go to Toronto now with two, the two doctors. Indira and Piao. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Jan. From are you are you practicing there. also, Indira? No, or not now. now. <laughs> no, I just, just I just manage just the office. Why? No, 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 manage the office. I, I, the I just office, work yeah. <clears throat> and I walk out, and the rest of it. <laughs> see the patient and walk out. You make the money, and she keeps the money. Yeah, I I have an empty pocket all the time. <laughs> I donate. <laughs> My purse is empty. Tanya <laughs> Jan, I really, um, uh, that uh, the earlier person who spoke about the precepts, eight precepts and about drinking, you know, I, I personally feel 
uh, I think for the path to progress, I think it's a very important thing to be away from like intoxicants that really, sometimes you don't realize it, but when you do give up, like it's so much easier because um, that's what happened to Pia. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was not so much into Buddhism before, but uh, I kind of like, I really like when made it, you know, yeah. I, I got really, for, for how many have you know, 40? 20. On his 40th birthday. So 20 years ago, I got fully saturated. I didn't have to drink anymore. Mm. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I, I I I just told him I want this like uh, one thing is for him to give up and also like for us never to entertain anybody offer. offer anyone a drink at my house. He found it very difficult to accept, <laughs> but <laughs> lately, that was the best thing. That was the best <laughs> thing we did in our lives. So I just wanted to share it with everyone here. Yes, especially in the West now, alcoholic is very alcoholism is very it's a bad. It's a yeah. widespread yeah. disease. Yeah. 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 Even here, we uh, we uh, we have strict guidelines in Canada. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, less than uh, three drinks per week is the new Canadian guidelines uh, to drink alcohol uh, because of increases the risk of six types of cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's high. It's a carcinogenic. It's a, a type one. Like a, it's like tobacco. It's like smoking, asbestos, alcohol comes in the same grade of carcinogen. A lot of people don't know because uh, they don't want to uh, publish that, you know. Accept it. Accept it. And also sometimes not only you drinking, but when you offer somebody else a drink, you're like, you know, they are, it's, uh, it's the same thing. It's not really because then they, they can go and do things. Which yeah, are, that's why I think the intoxication Buddha talks about you know, both bodily and mentally. Mentally is mainly, right? You get heedless, right? You can do rest of all the acusal. Other precepts can be broken. broken when you're intox intoxicated. That's right. You cannot control your action. Mm -hmm. When you think about something, you cannot stop it from getting, putting it into action, you know? When you, think also, about, we... if you want to hit someone, then you just go and hit someone. <laughs> And be careful here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ajahn, uh, actually, um, because lots of young people like are more into alcohol, especially after uh, COVID. So, you know, that's why these guidelines that Canada has brought forward, like it's, it's really important. Now people are more aware. Like, so, yeah. So uh, talking about intoxication, Buddha talk about uh, another form of intoxication. Uh, it's Anguttara Nikaya 3.39. Uh, intoxication with youth, intoxicated with health, and intoxicated with life. So this is the one you talk about, the opposites of old age, sickness, and death. That's so right. we, the big picture, we forget mm -hmm. because we are always intoxicated with uh, youth, like say we are not going to get old. Then intoxicated with health, in other words, we are not going to get sick. And in intoxicated with life, that we are live longer. In other words, you are not thinking about death. So this is another form of intoxication. Uh, we, we don't see it, but it is happening all the time. Happening to everybody, yes. all of us. Big yeah. picture. Into a, you talk about the big picture. If we don't think about aging, sickness, and death, then that it means we are intoxicated. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. And also, it's uh, like, uh, uh, it's nice to be reminded because sometimes in the West, especially people forget, you know, even old people yeah. like us. You know, so, I mean, like, yeah. uh, a lot of people, now even when we go to the temple, I told yeah. uh, Pia, uh, uh, like even my mom, 90, she's going to be 93, like people always say, are you one? No, like more longevity kind of, but like, so sometimes people, like it's better to tell people about, the reality of life and make them understand. I think that's very important. Yeah. But people yeah, know, but people just don't want to, to, to know yeah. that's all. They know, Do it. <clears throat> we all know we all get, gonna get old, get yeah. sick and die, but we just want to forget about it. Yeah, we because, are too intoxicated. Yeah, because it disturb our, our yeah. fantasy, you know. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. fantasy is to have a, 
a healthy, useful life, you know, mm -hmm. health, health, Sometimes. healthy life, and long-lasting mm -hmm. life. You know. But that's that's not just a fantasy yeah. people mm -hmm. want to indulge in. Mm. That's true. That's yeah, true. sometimes I remind uh, some of the patients, even come and say 80, 9, 90, I, I was never sick. So like I say, like, it's like a car, I, uh, get a metaphor for the car. So 89 or 89,000 kilometers. So it's just something is going to break <laughs> sooner mm -hmm. or later, you know. So it, it's a mileage you put in, right? It, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, and also uh, Tanaja, another thing about intoxicants, like I just remembered one thing is when you don't drink and you don't offer drinks to friends, you lose a lot of friends. So we can, you know, I mean, and but then I, I, it's a good thing too, because it's people who want to socialize that way, who really want want people to. So, you know, it's it's another way of progressing in the path because, yeah. you know, I mean, you lose uh, Asad Purusha, then you are left with Sat Purusha people. Well, Buddha said you should not associate with people who, who like to drink. Mm -hmm. Because okay. if you do, they will, they will ask you to drink with them. So. That's true. In many places, even Maha Mangala Sutra Buddha talks about that, not to drink. It's, it's a blessing not to having intoxication. Mm -hmm. Many, many other places. Uh, I, I think your time is limited today. I think almost 10.30. So maybe I let you, there may be other questions from Facebook. Okay, you, maybe we have some later. Maybe we can come back yeah, later. Sure, yeah, Thank yeah. you, Tana Jan. Yeah, go to Singapore with Belinda. Linda. Good evening, Tana uh, I'm listening. Okay. I, I, I've already quit alcohol. Okay. <laughs> you, you already quit alcohol. No, no, no drinking anymore. Good. Uh, so up to now, no drinking. Okay. <laughs> Who knows tomorrow? What tomorrow yes. will be? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, stay mindful. Do our best. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and let me go to Ninning again. Ninning, can you unmute your microphone? Yes. <clears throat> Is there anything that tells you to unmute? You cannot. Okay, I'm sorry. Just uh, listen let, then, let okay? Me, let me try again. Okay, you see the, the uh, at the middle of the screen, at the middle of the screen of your cell phone screen, it show a uh, unmute button. Push that button. You're not find it. Huh? Don't see it. Don't see unmute. Push. Okay. Push, push the unmute button. Push. Push that. You see that? You see the unmute button. You push it. Take your finger to it. Tap on it. Tap tap on the mute. Yeah. No. Mm. Okay, sorry. If, if you can unmute any time, just do it, okay? In the meantime, I'll go, go to the next person here, which is Sarasi. Sarasi, if I can pronounce your name correctly. Where are you from? Yes, Ajahn, I'm from Switzerland. Switzerland also. Where, which part of Switzerland? From Geneva. Geneva, okay. Originally from Sri Lanka, but I'm living in Switzerland. Good. Welcome to our room. <clears throat> I have been a regular viewer of your Zoom meeting, Ajahn, and I submit questions. Today only I join live. I see. You have any question tonight? <clears throat> uh, Actually, a general question, Ajahn, uh, with regard to Vipassana meditation, the insight meditation, uh, do we have to contemplate on um, the body, the uncertainty of the body and the Kayanupassana part of it in the contemplation of Vipassana meditation? Yes, uh, the body is, is a subject that we have to study or, or investigate. To see that it is anicca, impermanent, that it is anatta, there's no self in the body, that if you have any attachment to the body, you will get dukkha. So this is something that you have to, to study and see it for yourself, really as it is, see the body as it is, 
as a no-self. You're not the body, the body is not you, and the body is subjected to change. It, it has is subjected to aging, sickness, and death. Mm -hmm. So that when you study and understand and see it truly, then you can let go of your attachment to the body or the, or the desire to have the body, to keep the body with you permanently. You cannot do this. The body is only is your temporary possession. One day you have to lose this body. This is vipassana, teaching your mind to to let go of your attachment to this body. Okay. But you need the practice of samatha also, samatha pavana, which is mm -hmm. the practice of calming the mind first. Because if your mind is not calm, you cannot let go of your attachment. You need a calm mind to, in, in order to be able to let go of your attachment to the body. Mm -hmm. So you do, do, do these two practices alternatingly. You meditate to calm your mind. After you come out of your meditation, you teach your mind to let go of your attachment to your body. Understand? Yes, Sajan. Uh, and not just the body. Besides the body, we also attach to the feeling. So we Vedana, to, nupasana. Vedana, Nupana, Vipassana. And then we, we also attach to the mental state, the mind, the chitta. Mm -hmm. But we do it step by step. We do first the body, then we go to the feeling, then we go to the, the mind or the mental states. Mm -hmm. We have to study and understand that all these three things are anicca, dukkha, anatta. The body, the feelings, and the mental state are all anicca, dukkha, anatta. Okay, understand? Yes, Ajahn. Thank you very much, Ajahn. It's nice to uh, see you and hope you are doing well, and I wish you good health. Yeah, I wish Ajahn. you the same thing. Thank you, Ajahn. And hopefully, I think I will be visiting you. I want to pay respect to you, Ajahn. I'll be visiting you soon. And okay. hope I'm planning to. Okay. I'll see you then when you come. <clears throat> yes, Ajahn. Okay. I'll go to Singapore with Gary. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, Tanajan. Uh, no questions. Just happy to be listening. Okay. okay. So to Vancouver with Sri and Czech. <clears throat> Are you Siamese twin? Always together. <laughs> <laughs> Siamese twin is a uh, light, isn't it? I just, <laughs> they look like. <laughs> <laughs> like the mind and the body, they are twins. But we cannot see the mind. So we think that the, the body is singular, but it, it's actually part of the a twin. Mm -hmm. The mind and body goes together. <clears throat> but they are two different persons being connected together, like two bodies, like, like Siamese twins. <clears throat> the mind is the master or the and the body is the servant. <clears throat> the mind tells the body what to do. The mind is the it's mind that tells the body to stand up, to walk, to sit, to eat, to go here and there. It's all, it's all the, the command of the mind. <clears throat> you, see, you have a top the the um the topic is twins uh, like yeah. long time ago you have a and one day this twin will be separated at the at the end of the body life when the body dies then the remaining twin will continue continue on mm. the body is temporarily it can only exist for a hundred years or so then it will have to fall apart return back to the four elements. But the mind, the knowing element doesn't break up, so it goes on to a new body. Mm -hmm. Go on and reconnect, connect with a new body. 
and we have rebirth there. But the, the Buddha and the Arahant is no longer a no, twin. No, re, no rebirth because they, they no longer have any desire or, or need to have a body. If you still have sensual pleasure desire, then you will have to need, you will need to have a body in order for you to be able to access your sensual objects. You need the body with eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body to be able to, to access the, the sight, sound, smells, and tactile objects. But there's, if there's no craving for sensual pleasure, then there's no need to have a body. The body is just an instrument, a tool used by the mind. But once you have no desire to use the body, then there's no need to have rebirth anymore. Mm. But the third stage of the third stage of enlightenment, you don't need a body anymore, right? Like for the third stage. Once you pass the third stage, then you no longer need the body. Because you have got rid of all your all your sensual pleasure, desire, or craving, you you don't need any sensual gratification. So you don't need to have a body, but you still have you still attached to the the mental gratification, from piece of piece of the of meditation. The mind still crave for jhana, since it no longer crave for body, uh, sensual pleasure. It switch to to jhana for sensual grat for for gratification. Mm. And that, when you reach, when when you reach that part, then you have to stop re relying on jhana to keep you happy. Mm. You have to be free of any desire. Mm -hmm. Even the desire for jhana is still considered to be creating stress or dukkha mm -hmm. for the mind. <clears throat> if the mind doesn't want to have, the, to have any stress or dukkha, then it will have to stop this desire for this, <clears throat> for this uh, mental state of mind, which is jhana. <clears throat> Once it's, once it's free of all this desire or craving, then it has Nibbana, the mind has permanent peace, permanent happiness. The happiness that is born out of, without any cravings left in the mind. Mm. <clears throat> okay, have, how far have you gone with the four foundation of mindfulness? Um, I forgot all about it now. Too busy. <laughs> too busy. Yeah, we're still still thinking about that. Um, just a question, Tana. That when we train our mindfulness, like, are we training? Like, are we trying to access to the knowing element or the mind? We try to stop the mind from running all over the place. The mind is like a monkey right now. It wants to go here and there and everywhere. So you want to start with, with mindfulness. Have it to stay with putto, putto. Don't go, don't go to the restaurant. Don't go to the movie house. Don't go to, you know, all places. But how about the knowing element? Well, that's the that's the consequence. Once you once the mind stops thinking, then then you can see the knowing element, which is always there, but it's been blocked by the by the thinking. By your thoughts, see. See the the knowing is like the 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 screen, your computer screen. You can only see the computer screen when you turn off the the the, the screen, right? When you turn mm -hmm. it on, then you got pictures on the screen. You don't see the screen itself anymore. 
So when you get rid of, of all the, the pictures that appears on the screen, then you see the screen. And the screen is like the knowing, see. The knowing is always there. It, it knows what's going on, it knows thinking, it, it knows that everything, but it cannot see itself. Mm. But when you stop when you stop the thinking, then there's nothing left for it to see, then it see itself. Mm. Mm. So when we see the knowing element, is it like consider enlightenment stage or? It's a temporary enlightenment because you, you at that time your defilement stop working temporarily. Mm -hmm. But after you come out of meditation, your defilement start to work again. Your craving come back again. So you have to use wisdom to get rid of your of all your defilements. Yeah. And once you once you use wisdom, then all your defilement will be completely destroyed. Not temporarily, like using mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Then when you use, use wisdom to destroy all your cravings, then you have Nibbana as a result. Permanent peace, permanent, permanent jhana, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's not called jhana anymore, it's just called Nibbana instead. Mm -hmm. Because jhana is a temporary peace, temporary Nibbana. Mm. So, Nirvana is like permanent black screen, no permanent key. knowing without any defilement. Yeah. You can still think, you can still feel, but it doesn't have any defilement. Yeah. Yes. Okay, anything else? Mm, I saw Sulan. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a few people waiting. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Dana. I'll go to Diana from Rio. Hi, Diana. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I was wondering, um, do you see a value in psychology and psychiatry uh, for people who have been through trauma, or do you purely Yes, Buddhism is the best psycho psych psychology. That's, that's what Buddhism is about, the, the science of the mind. Mm. And when you study Buddhism, you're studying psychology unknowingly. Because we don't call Buddhism psychology, so, but it's psychology. It teaches you how to, what, what caused your mind to be restless and agitated or stressful. And it teaches you how to stop your restlessness and agitation and stress. Yes. Yes, of course. I didn't think of it like that. But yes. what about feeling, processing past trauma? Is the answer purely to be mindful? Or stop, is there a... stop processing. Because okay. you don't know how to properly, properly processing them yet. Because you have to stop your mind from processing wrongly. And once you have finished, once you are able to stop your mind from thinking, then you direct the mind to think, to think, to think of the truth. Okay. To, to think of anicca dukkang anatta. Everything yeah. is anicca dukkang anatta. This is the right way of processing things to, to kill your mental illness. Okay. If you can see everything as being anicca and dukkhanatta, then you will be cured of your, your mental illness. I understand. That gives me a lot to think about. Thank you. Okay, good. I'll go to Kafai Ling from Malaysia. <clears throat> uh, uh, good day to you, Tana Jan. I have no questions for, for now. Okay, go to Indonesia with Intan. In ten. Good any evening, Prajan. Yes, I have you have any question? Uh yes. Uh Prajan, it, when we are cook, can we use alcohol for cooking? When you cook, you can you use what? Alcohol. Cocoa? 
No, no, no. I mean alcohol like wine or uh, oh, no. something like that. If you keep the five percent, then you cannot use alcohol, even oh. for cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second uh, question is, uh, I, I want to confirm uh, to Pra Ajahn, uh, when we are meditate until the step that we can uh, we can know uh, our body and our mind is separate. Uh, the mind is the knowing. At that time, uh, the mind is in the knowing. Yes, the mind is the knowing, but the mind also has defilement. It still have, it still have no part more. And it's still attached to the body. See? So when you come out of meditation, you have to teach mm -hmm. the mind to let go of the attachment to the body. This is we call vipassana or wisdom. Mm -hmm. When you come out of meditation, you should teach the mind. The body is not me. The body is somebody I, I use as my servant. Mm -hmm. And one day I have to give up this body mm -hmm. because it's temporarily. Okay. Okay, understand. Uh -huh. yeah. You have to constantly remind yourself that the body is not you. The body is uh -huh. your servant. You use uh -huh. the body to, to take you to wherever you want to go, to see whatever you want to see. But uh -huh. one day this body will get old, get sick and die. Uh -huh. And you must be willing to let, let it be. If you, if you uh -huh. don't want it to get old, get sick and die, you can get dukkha. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, another question, uh, Prajan. Uh, if we are working, we have a, like a KPI to evaluation our job. Uh, how about meditation? Can we also uh, evaluation our achievement or our, uh, our planning? Or just let it be. <laughs> when you when you meditate, you want to stop all your your thinking. You don't want to think mm -hmm. at all. Mm. You, you can think only after you come out of meditation. Right now, uh -huh. yeah. Right now, you can think all you want, but it's not good to think. Think with, uh, with you should think with wisdom rather than think with delusion. No, Usually, I mean. You, you, uh, you, no, Rajan, I mean, uh, can we make a planning, like, uh, how, planning. how we, uh, uh, yeah, we have a planning, uh, we make a planning, or we, we, we make a goal, uh, what we want to achieve, uh, can, can we uh, do like that, or just let it be? Well, you can make planning, but you can also tell yourself that, that this planning cannot be, it's not certain, whether it's, you, can, mm. you can stick to what you plan or not. Because everything mm -hmm. is anicca. Okay. So that way you can be flexible. You plan to go mm -hmm. to Bangkok and then something happened, you cannot go to Bangkok. Then mm -hmm. you say, okay, this is anicca. So mm -hmm. you don't get sad. But if you <laughs> stick to your plan and you want to go to the Bangkok, then you can become sad because you cannot mm -hmm. go to Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So you have to plan with flexibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because everything is Tanicha. You don't know, maybe you die before you you go to do you maybe before you, you, you die before you can do what you plan to do. Mm -hmm. Or get sick, you know, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is you always have to have this anicca in the back of your part of your plan, whatever you mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Then you will not be sad when you, when you cannot do what you plan to do. Mm -hmm. So you always have to think of anicca, dukkha, anatta in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. With everything that you think or, or plan, that things can be anicca, dukkha, anatta. Any planning mm -hmm. can also be anicca, dukkha, anatta. But you still plan because sometimes it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it goes according to your plan. But sometimes it doesn't go according to your plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready for for either one, either outcome. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't succeed. Mm -hmm. 
And then you also have to plan for dying also. Have you planned for your dying also, your death? Where you're going to be buried? Mm -hmm. Where... <laughs> Why not? It's, this is going to happen also, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand. If you plan for your funeral, then you, you don't want to plan for anything else, would you? Because no matter how much you do, how much money you make, you're going to have to end up in a funeral anyway. <laughs> so that's why the Buddha keeps telling us to remind of our real of, of our real plan, which is we're gonna get all get sick and die. Mm -hmm. This is the this is this is the best best plan for the mind. Mm -hmm. So that the mind can be ready to to let go of the body when it happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plan okay. to get old, plan to get sick and plan to die. Yeah. When you get all get sick and that, then you will not be sad because you you have succeed. You you're, you're mm -hmm. planning. You have achieved your, what you plan to do. You mm -hmm. plan to get old. You plan to get sick, and you plan to die. <laughs> so when you get old, you're happy. You get sick, you're happy. When you die, you're happy because you get what you want, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the best planning. Mm -hmm. I do this planning, of, think of this planning every day, all the time, all day long. Then you mm -hmm. won't have to do anything. Then what, what is the point of making money? What, what is the point of having everything? In the end, you're going to have to lose them all anyway. Mm -hmm. The problem is you don't plan. See? So you, you, you think you're going to live forever. You're not going to get sick. You're not, get, you're not going to get old. Yeah, this is my development. <laughs> Okay, yeah. your delusion. <laughs> Avicha, Avicha. Not, know, not knowing the real plan. What is the real plan? Mm. The real plan is to get old, get sick, and die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'll go to Sulan. Hi, Sulan. How are you? From Singapore. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ajahn. How about you? Good, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Yeah. You have any planning yet? Have you made your plan yet? Oh, I, I haven't made my plan yet. Yeah, well, but... <laughs> well, you should, you should, you know. <laughs> yes, um... As in, uh, I was hearing what you were uh, sharing just now. And then um, it, it also came across my mind, you know, like when after a person dies, then usually people will have to embalm the body by like um, taking out the organs, you know, then pumping all the chemicals inside. Then um, it's either, um, you know, the corpse will be buried or it will be uh, cremated. Yeah, so... So when I think about all this, uh, kind of bring some uh, um, uncomfortable feelings in me, yeah. Because so. your environment doesn't want to have this to happen to you, see? <laughs> to your body, not to you, to your body. Oh, yes. But if you, you if you keep thinking about it, eventually your mind will be able to accept it. Mm. Yeah. Because then it's not it's not gonna be anything else. This is the way it's gonna be. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, accept it or not. Yes. If you accept, then you can be happy. Mm. If you don't accept, then you can be sad. Mm. It's true. Mm. Okay, try to accept. Try to make this planning in your in in your mind. I plan to get old, I plan to get sick, I plan to die. Yeah. I have to make this uh mental preparation for myself. Yeah. yeah. And Buddha say you are subjected to aging, sickness, and death. Mm. So it's the same thing, like you are we have to plan for getting old, getting sick and die. Mm. Yes. So when you have planning, when it happens, then no problem. 
you you know exactly what to do. Mm. Yes. And I heard that um at one of my friends shared that um like the, to the person that is um dying, uh he or she will need to let go of everything. So in fact, the person that is dying is suffering the most compared to the people that are living because the people that are living uh, only lose um, that one person but the person that's dying is uh, have to let go of everything so he or she will suffer the most than the one that is dying it's not how much you have to leave behind you that causes you to suffer the most what what caused you to suffer the most is the intensity of your attachment to things. If you're not attached to things at all, then they will have no, you will not suffer at all. Like the Buddha and the noble disciple, they're not attached to anything, so they don't suffer. So you have to learn to learn to let go, learn to let go of your attachment. Do not cling to anything. Mm. Look at everything as an ija temporarily. Mm. Anatta, not under your control. Not under my control. Mm. Okay, I think we are running almost out of time. I have to go to the. Yeah. Okay, okay before I go to Facebook, let me ask Ninning again. Can you still talk? Can you unmute your microphone? Can you? No, no, I cannot. No. Okay, I'm sorry. And we'll go to Facebook for more questions. Kun Bon. We have uh, 12 questions this evening okay. so far. Uh, five questions from the assistant email. The first question from Sam from Australia. I've been reading and listening to Ajahn's Dharma talk, trying to keep the five precepts as much as possible and doing uh, dana regularly and starting to meditate recently. Could Ajahn please give advice on how to become a sotapanna as a lay person? Well, you have to, you have to study and see that the body doesn't, isn't you. And there's no self in this body. There's no you or I in this body. The body is just made up of the four elements. When they combine, they become the 32 parts. So you have to, to see the body clearly, truly, that there is no self in this body. You are not the body, you're just a user of this body. So you must be, you must, you must let go of your attachment to this body. You must accept the, the aging sickness and death of this body. If you can accept this, then you will, you can become a sotapanna. Uh, four question from Samanji. The first question: Where are Deva and Brahma realms situated? We call this a spiritual realm. All of us, um, even human, the mind of human like us, also exists in the spiritual realms. We don't exist in this physical realm. The physical realm only is the body that exists. <clears throat> Anything that's physical is in, in the in the physical realm. Anything that is mental or spiritual exists in the spiritual realm. And this realm are divided according to the the level of happiness or, or, or suffering. Okay, and the second question: out of the five precepts, the most difficult is to abstain from telling lies. How to abstain from telling even a small lie? Don't say anything. Shut up. And sometimes we have to abstain from telling the truth to save a certain relationships, maintaining peace at the office. Should we always tell the truth at any cost? You don't have to tell the truth if you think you, it will cost you something. You just stay quiet, that's all. Just don't say anything. Uh, the next question, if a male is interested in entering the Buddhist order, he can become a monk. But for a female, it is not possible to become a bhikkhuni. 
can the male bhikkhu in Buddhist country take the initiative to set up the bhikkhuni order again? Unfortunately not, because, that, because this thing has, has been laid down by the Buddha himself, and we cannot re, re, re-initiate the bhikkhuni ordination, because in order to, to ordain a bhikkhuni, you need a bhikkhuni sangha to do it, along with the, with the bhikkhu sangha. Without the Pikuni Sankha, we cannot do the Pikuni ordination anymore. Okay, and the next two questions from Tan Nick. First question Should a married person try to get rid of sexual desire as part of the practice? Well, it depends on what you want. See. If you want to become enlightened, then you have to give up your sexual um, activities. If you, if you want to have special spiritual achievement, you need to give up your, your sexual activity. And the second question, is it necessary to get rid of sexual desire? It depends on whether you, you want to or not, see? and whether you have the ability, the strength to resist your sexual desire or not. Next question from Li Tech Hua. Panajan, it has been said that if one offers light, one will get married. Does offering a light really give us merit? Light, something light, what? light, like brightness. Brightness. Oh, I don't, I don't know what you mean by giving light. You mean giving flashlight or something to? Maybe a candle or something. A candle or something. Well, it really just, it's just another material that you give. That's all. And you you get the you get the same merit as if you give food or you give up clothing. Okay. The next question from Darren. Panajan, when I meditate, at most I can only reach up to the second and the third jhana. May I ask what is holding me back from reaching ekakata? How do I progress to the next level so I can attain ubeka? Your persistence, I guess. Your your. You need persistence, you have to keep up. Perseverance. And the next three questions from Lisa Tan. Uh, One time I tried to help a stroke patient to the emergency room uh, with public service healthcare. Then afterwards, one of the family members asked why I didn't admit the patient to private service because the patient is an elderly person. It sounds the family member was not happy with the option taken and blamed me. So the first question, how should I react to this kind of family member response and mindset? You don't have to react to them. Just, just, just listen to what they say and then move on. Forget about it. Second question, should we be more concerned and think twice when we want to help people who is sick and require emergency action? Well, if you can think, then that would be good. But sometimes when you're under a certain situation, sometimes you might not have enough time to think properly. But as long as you have good intention and you want to help that person, I don't think that should be any any bad bad thing you know and the last question should i help or just leave the family alone in the future it's up to you <laughs> that is all okay that's all the time we have also for tonight sorry about that ending i hope next time you might be able to talk with us okay okay i hope this meeting it's beneficial to you and help you understand better the practice of Buddhism. And maybe one day we'll get you to become enlightened. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Prajan. Thank you, Tanajan. Thank you so much, Prajan. Good night, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank